Isolation can be nice, but humans are social creatures by nature. From climate change researchers in Antarctic survey stations to astronauts aboard the ISS, there are people out there doing jobs that require them to be isolated, sometimes for months or even years at a time. And now that being stuck inside is taking its toll on everyone, they have a lot of advice to help us through it. So let's all settle down with a nice hot drink and cover 10 tips to survive social isolation, from my sanctum sanctorum to yours. We are all struggling these days, and it's important for us to take time for our mental health in this time of turbulence and turmoil. To get some alone time, I've taken to hiding in the only place I truly feel like myself, my panic room, otherwise known as my closet. But what more constructive things can you do at home to make this time as peaceful as possible? The most common technique to survive isolation is likely the simplest and most effective. Make a schedule and stick to it. Physician Shana Gifford spent a year in the Hawaii space exploration analog and simulation replicating what life would look like on Mars. And because days seem to blur together in isolation, she suggests running your day like a game. Ask, what phase of the day am I in? Along with work, self-improvement, and helping others, it's okay, maybe necessary, to slot in a time for doing nothing whatsoever. Likewise, researcher Zhang-Wei Wang, a scientist with the Center for Global Sea Level Change, recounts that keeping a routine and working in short bursts got him through lengthy months on an Antarctic icebreaker. With our cycle of school and work gone, maintaining a daily routine, even in quarantine, can provide a helpful structure to the nebulous time space of social isolation. Similarly, Austrian physician Carmen Posnick, who spent a year at Concordia Research Station in Antarctica, notes that during their four months of sunless winter, moments of low mood or loss of motivation are part of the isolation, and she emphasizes the importance of trying to see the present, asking yourself, what can I do now, in the next hours, this week, and taking things one step at a time. She says, every day you've made it through will improve your self-confidence and the feeling that you were able to cope with the isolation. During her time in Antarctica, Posnick says, I improved my piano skills, learned how to build Roman armor out of plaster, how to speak French and Italian, and started writing a book. Like Posnick, keeping your mind set on personal goals is a trick experts suggest that gives time spent while isolated meaning and provides motivation. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield says that, It's an extremely dangerous environment up on board the space station, and yet we find a way to thrive and be productive that far away from our normal lives. And gave some examples on setting goals. Start doing things. They don't always have to be the things that you always did before. Take care of family. Start a new project. Learn to play guitar. Write. Create. It's a chance to do something different. Keeping on theme, American astronaut and chemist Katie Coleman spent two months in isolation due to NASA's pre-flight quarantines and was only allowed to see her son through a pane of glass before she traveled to the International Space Station. She says she was able to get through it by focusing on the importance of her mission. Now her son uses the same mission mentality to get through self-isolation because the mission at hand is protecting each other. We're not astronauts, but we are like Coleman's son, and our mission is to stay home and keep everyone around us safe. Mental health is at the forefront of this quarantine struggle. A Royal Canadian Navy sailor who we'll call Brown suggests that meditation can be a great way to keep your mind at ease, either in the typical sense or just a moment without technological stimulation. It's helpful when checking in with your mind and body. They highlight meditation as a way to practice compassion to yourself and others, specifically saying they like to treat or talk to myself as if I was talking to seven-year-old me. This is a common therapeutic technique. It is commonly used in combination with sitting with your thoughts for a moment each day and breathing in for five seconds, holding for five, and breathing out for five. Even if it doesn't work, it'll help calm you down when you're wound up. As reluctant as I am to admit it, exercise has been proven to benefit mental health. Aerobic exercise increases blood circulation to the brain, which has been shown to reduce the impact of anxiety, depression, and negative mood swings. It's no surprise that most experts recommend exercise to stave off your self-isolation demons. Posnick recommends sports like yoga, Zumba, Pilates, or strength training are easily done at home. It helped me with changing perspective on things, improved my physical well-being, and reduced stress, making me more relaxed. Brown says that the movements yoga runs you through will not only work your muscles, the breathing will help open your lungs and bring more oxygen into your body. I, I know, I know, staying physically active is difficult, especially with apartment living or those with pre-existing mental and physical conditions. 
But Chris Hadfield suggests that we identify and work around our limitations, and exercise is scientifically proven to make you feel better. We've talked before about the importance of a balanced diet. Everything we eat has an impact on not only our bodies, but on our brains as well. Our brains only comprise 2% of our total body weight, yet they use 20% of our energy resources. The frontal lobes are so sensitive to drops in blood sugar that a change in mood is the primary sign of a nutrient deficiency. In other words, keeping a varied diet with all the essential nutrients that your body needs will stave off mood swings. You can also try experimenting in the kitchen to make homemade versions of your favorite restaurant foods, like Gifford and her colleagues who once recreated a Subway sandwich bar for dinner while in isolation emulating life on Mars. Sleep is also paramount to maintaining a healthy lifestyle, in and out of quarantine. A healthy sleep schedule of 7-9 to nine hours a night not only helps with the formation of memory, but maintains energy levels during the day. If you're dozing off in the early afternoon, you may be experiencing the symptoms of sleep deprivation. If you've been sleeping for less than 7 hours but still feel fine, it's possible that your body has adapted to sleep deprivation, like mine has. But that doesn't mean that your health isn't affected by a fragmented sleep schedule. There's more to thriving in a stressful situation than doing push-ups, keeping a schedule, and making sure that we're eating more than just microwave Pillsbury Pizza Pops for three meals a day. Unless you're Tom Hanks, you're going to need to talk to real people sometimes. Astronaut Luca Parmitano says that while living on the ISS, the best thing to keep their sanity is really the communication with the crew and with the ground. Coleman, likewise, spent as much of her time as possible on the ISS, keeping in touch with her son back home. While at the South Pole, Wang kept his trusty satellite phone close to his person at all times, and Gifford recommends to offer words of encouragement, teach them, and learn something from them. Interact meaningfully. Communication with loved ones is the crux, it seems, for all of these people to survive in isolation. Text your mom, call your dad, FaceTime your cousin, talk to whoever makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Communication isn't all phone calls and Zoom meetings. Whether there are partners, siblings, parents, or roommates, it's hard to keep the peace when we can't get any alone time. Little grievances can seem to stack up. Posnick implores us to talk with one another about little annoyances, like when your roommate drinks the last of the orange juice. She says, your roommate's small habit, unimportant until now, may suddenly trigger a fight. This is why it is important to talk about things that one perceives as annoying. The sooner, the better. And always in a friendly, open manner. Grail, can I have your attention for a sec? Because um, I'd like to talk to you about something that I perceive as annoying, and, and I'd like to do it in a friendly, open manner, please. I didn't do nothing. You know what you did! This way, we can both let the people around us know how to keep us happy by avoiding pet peeves. And we can find out how to make isolation as comfortable as possible for them, too. Some friendly competition is a great way to blow off some steam. Make an indoor mini golf course, play cards, learn what the hell backgammon is. And hey, from Jackbox to Mario Party, there are plenty of video games these days that we can play together with every member of our household. Even if you're sequestered away from your friends, just like reading a good story in a novel, we can also experience something fantastic through video games. But if some friendly competition is what you crave, online multiplayer games provide an easy venue to connect with loved ones without ever needing to change out of your pajama bottoms. There's a pressure to remain productive in quarantine. History is happening right outside our doors, and what are we doing? Watching new episodes of The Midnight Gospel and learning how to crochet? It's not you, It's been said that Shakespeare wrote King Lear in quarantine, but comparing ourselves to Billy the Bard is pretty silly, even in the best of times. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we're not being productive enough. Just remember, as long as we're adhering to social distancing guidelines, we're all doing the best that we can to protect the people around us. A lot of things are out of our control right now. What is in our control is how we choose to spend our time. So do what makes you happy. Speaking of which, if you'll excuse me, I need to go schedule a call with an old friend of mine. It's called a video chat for a reason, Brew. I can see you. That's good. Now I just need to be able to see you too. You can't see me? No, I can't. Check to see if your firewall is blocking it.